E Cam fam, what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Marshall Creates with E Cam. So, as you saw by the title of the video, we're talking about lust today. But first, let me check in with the people. What's good, healthy, bearded? Great to see you. Thanks again, Mr. Duncan, Mr. Moderator, for, for joining us and moderating today. Alancha, great to see you. Thanks so much for popping over, y'all. Alancha's in my, my design community, so she popped over to support. I sincerely appreciate you. David, thanks for tuning in again, my brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. And the Silver Lining Home Place, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a, a good one. I have a lot to teach us. Yes, yes. So this one, I feel like this is going to be a short one, y'all, because it's so easy. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. Um. So if you're not familiar with LUTs, so what, what is a LUT? It stands for lookup table. Okay, it stands for lookup table. And all it really is is color grading for your video. That's all it really is. What is it looking up? I have no idea. Why is it called lookup table? I'm, I have no idea, literally. Um, I just know what it's called, like what the acronym is, and what, it, what it stands for. Um, but first, just to, to give you guys a heads up, there are a couple videos on the Ecamm channel discussing LUTs. So I did one maybe a year or two ago that's on the channel about LUTs. Um, so if you go to the Ecamm channel, type in LUTs or go to my channel, I have a playlist of Ecamm videos on my YouTube channel. Um, that, that video's there. And also, I recently did a demo mode pros episode with Elysio Way where I talked about LUTs again. So there are a couple more videos um, on the channel about LUTs and what they are. So this video, I'm going to show you how to make them, but I just wanted to give you that recap as well. So for example, look at my video, keep a close eye on my video right now. Okay. So I have a LUT apply that I've been using for a while, um, but it's on now. So if I drag the slider all the way down, well, I'm just going to take it off completely it's just so you can see the difference. So this is without the LUT, right? And this is as I drag the slider up, maybe take it off again, drag the slider up. See how my color is changing? Off, on, off, on. So this is 100% intensity, but I, I like to keep it a, a little, about about 55, okay? So right here, so this is off. This is where I like to keep it. So as you, if you look at this corner, look at the, the shade of that blue. You see the difference? Even even that sign right there, my hat, you can really tell it tell the difference. So you see the difference. So this is with it with it with it off. It looks fine, looks good. But as I like it like like this, I like it add a bit more teal into the shot. Like if you look at my hat, my hat goes from you know just blue blue to like a little bit more of a teal, uh, shade, right? So that's what we're gonna talk about today is how to create these for yourself. Um, but before we even do that. You can actually get LUTs. I'll talk about this in the video. You can get LUTs that are already already pre-made and install them right into Ecamm. Um, so I'll show you. Um, I'll show you that really quickly. All right. Yes, if you can, guys, um, if you have a question, just add a Q and a colon so I can find quickly find your uh your your question. So Mr. Camera Junkie, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, my brother. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop into live demo mode real quick, y'all, so you can see exactly um, where to install LUTs. So as you can see, I have this camera effects panel here. So I have my my camera settings um, adjusted as well, and then I have my LUT down here. So see see where it says select LUT. If I hit the X, it's gonna remove it completely. So this is where you would go to actually apply the LUT. All right. Um, so my recommendation is to adjust your picture settings uh, first before you even apply the LUT and adjust them in the camera first. So what I recommend is get the, the when you plug your camera up and, and plug it into Ecamm, make sure the camera looks good first in the camera. Make sure the shot looks good first in the camera. It looks pleasing to your eye. That's my recommendation because typically how LUTs are used, y'all, not to get too nerdy, is there's like a flat picture profile. Um, or a raw picture profile. So let me just show you what that is. I just want to show you how it's typically used um, real quick. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just type in flat picture profile. 
um, just to give you an example of what that looks like. So this is a good example right here. So you can you guys see this? I know it's probably um, pretty small. So on the right hand side, this is like a flat picture profile, like a raw picture profile that videographers and photographers sometimes use where it's like not a lot of contrast. So you add a LUT to bring back the contrast and add more of a, um, a, a different color vibe to the photo to make it look more cinematic. That's the main goal of it. If you're wondering like, okay, why would I even use this? It's to make it look a bit more cinematic and pleasing to the eye. That's the main goal. All right. So, um, that's typically how it's used, but what I would recommend, and this isn't like for professional videographers or anything like that, is get the, the picture looking good in your camera. So what does that mean? As you can even see how they showed it here on this camera, uh, they, they usually have different kind of picture profiles. Like for example, in the Canon M50, um, there are picture styles that you can choose. Um, in the actual, I'm using the Canon R6 as well. And I think they're, I think they may be called picture styles in there as well, but select those. Um, I also have a video on the channel, um, about the M50. I'll go in, into more detail about that, but if, as long as it looks decent out of the camera, you may not even need or want to use a LUT, but I would recommend you do that first. And that, that the LUT is just extra, extra sauce on the shot, right? It's just extra sauce. So as you can see, I go back to this, um, the, without the LUT, it looks like this, which is fine. I'm using the Canon R6. With the LUT, it looks like this. So it really just depends on your camera, but getting look, get it looking good in the camera first. For example, if I switch over to my Canon M50, I just literally just plugged this in. I had to dust dust, <laughs> dust it off, y'all, <laughs> and plug it in, because it's been like a while since I used the M50. I just set it and forget it. Like I, I didn't even really select the picture profile. I think I have it, um, I think I took a picture of it. Let me, let me see what I have it set to, y'all, real quick. So with a daylight white balance um, and then a neutral picture style. So with this, if I adjust my, for example, let's say I, I was, I was, I'm good with this. Let's say I'm good with this. I'm going to come back into um, live demo mode, command D. So I can adjust the picture settings inside of Ecamm here. So I can make further refinements in Ecamm. So just the tint, saturation, bring in some more color. This is more of a flat profile. So if I select the LUT from here, like I have a, um, these are actually LUTs from my LUT pack that I have. Vintage, see how it's, it's kind of harsh when you first add it, but you can adjust the intensity. So I just switch to another one. So you see, it's like a different vibe. It's almost like an Instagram filter, right? Shark Week, I'm assuming this is cold. I haven't used this in a while yet. It's cold, more of a cool temperature. Oh, this is straight black and white. <laughs> you can adjust it so you can have a little color in there as well. So let's do, let's do cozy, let's see what this is. Okay, yeah. So I'm not really a, a fan of the M50, I, but you know, compared to the, the, um, the R6, of course. So you see it's like, it looks worlds different, but if I spent more time dialing in this picture before it came out of the M50, it would have looked a little, a little bit different as well. So of course I'm using different lenses. It's, it's not even, um, you know, the 4k is cropped and stuff. So it looks a little bit different. I have a different lens on it. So the background isn't as blurry, but how the LUT looks will depend on your camera and how you have the settings dialed in on your camera first. And then you bring them in the Ecamm and you can make the adjustment to the picture settings. All right. So real quick, I'll show you guys where to, um, find the LUT. Let me pop out a live demo mode. All right. Let me see. Shift command D. I'm trying to learn my shortcut y'all. Boom. So let me go over to the screen share. So I have um, LUTs, of course, uh, liveluts.com. You can see the LUT. I have one LUT, LUT pack available so far um, here. So you can preview them. So this is the ones I just kind of went through. But a source that I recommend, y'all, um, well, you can find some free LUTs. Let's just say free LUTs. 
They have different services that will give you a LUTs for free to try out. And But I recommend, of course, Envato Elements. Elements.envato.com. I just type in LUTs and go down to add-ons here. And then you can see you have these different LUTs that you can download. So each one will give you previews of what the LUTs will actually do to your photo. So if, for example, if I download this one really quickly, right? Just type in Ecamm. I'm just doing an overview, like a recap, if you didn't see the other videos and you're brand new to LUTs right now. So downloads. All right, so I just unzipped it. So now I'm gonna come back into Ecamm Boom. All right. Come back here. Remove this LUT. Reset my picture settings. I'm going to go to select LUT. And go to downloads. LUTs pack. PC. Okay. So these look like files that I can't use. Hmm. All right, y'all. So this one didn't work. So we're looking for a couple different file types that we need. Um, so I should have checked that first. I, I never even saw that file type before. So let's go back um, and find a file type that I actually can use. So there's like .cube and .3D um, file types that Ecamm accepts. All right, so. Lightroom, Lightroom Mobile. See, I should have looked at that first, y'all. That's what I should have did. Forgive me, please. Parisian city portrait photo. So let me just check the files first. There we go. Dot 3DL dot cube. Boom. So let's do <laughs> download this one instead. They're like, we know you're live, so we're going to give you something you can use. <laughs> All right. Um, so downloads. Parisian city. Hard to come back into uh, live demo mode. Okay. I come back here. All right, now so I'm, I'm going to go to select LUTs. Downloads, Parisian City, LUT, boom. So you see the, the files we can use are highlighted. So they all work pretty much the same. So I'm going to... Uh, use dot cube. I always like the dot cube because I, I I just like it. I like that extension. I don't know what it is, what it stands for, but dot cube it's cute to me. <laughs> it's more visually appealing to me. So I just select it. So as you can see, it's really harsh when you apply it, right? But you adjust the intensity here of the slider, right? You adjust the intensity, and I can also tweak my my um other settings first even though I'm doing it second, but I could have done this first, right? And then add in this LUT. So this is with it out, with without it, and this is with it up. See, so it's like you just tweak these until you get a look that you like, right? So I'm afraid to tweak my other one because I've, I've, <laughs> I've used this look. I've used this, uh, this for so long. I've used it for so long, so. What I can do, you know what I'll do for you guys is I will make note of these values. I wish you could save it and just leave it, but I don't believe you can. Um, so let me see. We're looking at negative 7, 26. Uh, what we got? Negative 4, 5, and 35. Negative 4, 5, and 35. So what I'll do is I'll hit reset, which I... Don't ever do, because I just set it and forget it. I, it's been like this for so long. As long as your lighting conditions are the same and your camera settings are the same, you don't ever have to change it. Once you find a LUT you like, right? So I'll do reset. So this is straight out of camera, and this is no LUT, okay? So if I add the one that I just downloaded, let's see how this looks on this shot. Boom, kind of harsh, so I'll bring it down some. So this is off, and this is 
with it up. Oh, I actually like that. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. All right, y'all. So now we'll get into the good. So this is what I would recommend you do to create your own LUT. There are a couple different ways. The first way is you can download like more of a flat picture profile. Um, let me hop out of live demo mode. So you could download like a more of a flat picture profile uh, from the internet, just like a, a test image. So I'll show you that really quickly. Um, so I'll go here to screen share. So let's type in like flat picture profile. Sample. Uh, so this is one way. So you, I can literally click this one, right? Do command save image as actually did this a little while ago. So it's already actually saved here. Sample photo. You can do this and work from this. Or what I recommend is you just take a screenshot of your frame in Ecamm. I'm on a live demo mode, I'm trying to use these shortcuts, y'all. Boom, there we go. So um, you can use Apple, so it will be Shift Command 4, and then take a screenshot of your, your frame. And I'll take this LUT off and do that again without the LUT on there. Shift Command 4, take a screenshot of your frame. So that's one way. Um, and I use also use, I use snag it. So I may have mentioned this before, um, but it's a screenshot application. So they have this little, oh, you can't see it, but um, it's like a little toggle on the side of the screen that lives on the side of the screen. So you can literally like drag this around. Oh, uh, look at my eyes. <laughs> this looks crazy. Let me try again. I should have did it just to be funny. So. Screenshot, boom, save, and then save this. So I'll do file, save as, and then I'll do um, episode eight, say Marshall sample. So once you have your frame from your camera, how your camera currently looks, open up Photoshop. So this is assuming that you guys have Photoshop. Um, and let me pop out of live demo mode, go to Ecamm, hold on y'all, command uh, D. Okay. All right. So screen share. All right. So we're in Photoshop. So this tutorial is I'm showing you how to create the LUTs in Photoshop. So it's in, in the title of the video or on the thumbnail. Um, but that's the method that we're using. Okay. Um, it's in Photoshop. So I'm going to do file open. Um, I'm going to do Marshall sample Hit open. Okay. So this is what we're going to work off of. All right, y'all, this is what we're going to work off of. So step number one, are y'all following me? Let me take a break real, real quick to make sure y'all are still with me. Y'all with me here, y'all? Make sure you can see. Okay, can y'all see everything good? All right, let me drag this over. Okay. Oh, I'm not even centered. In the frame. All right. Y'all with me? <laughs> All right, let's just, let's keep going. Okay, so in Photoshop, I have Photoshop open. I just opened this image, right? You want to make sure that, so you look at your layers panel, right? And I don't use Photoshop all the time, but I am a graphic designer, so I do use it for photo manipulation primarily. Um, but for design, most design stuff, I use Affinity Designer. But if I got to do some photo manipulation, I'll use Illustrator. I mean, uh, Photoshop from time to time. I have a lot of different resources too, y'all. Um, but I'm going to get into that because I can talk about that stuff all day. Anyway, I have Photoshop open. I have this sample image here, okay? And we're going to create a LUT. I'm going to show you different ways to create a LUT. Step number one, you want to make sure that this is a background layer. So it doesn't say background layer. So you got to go to layer. Oops layer at the top you can't even see it um it says layer up here y'all uh let me let me remove i won't i don't i won't remove that frame yeah let me remove this this frame real quick in ecamm so y'all can see the top 
of this thing. Okay, hold on. Where are my overlays? Overlays, where are you? Okay, so we got to bring them back. Overlays. There you are. Remove this. Okay, so this is fine. So hold on, y'all. Give me a second. I just want to rearrange some stuff real quick. So I'm going to select this. We're going to remove this overlay from this scene. Okay. I'm actually going to remove this as well. Uh, we good. Why does it look like it's duplicated though? All right. Y'all still can't see. <laughs> oh, Lord. There we go. Okay, now you can see file up here. Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, so go to uh, layer. Can y'all y'all follow me? Okay, layer new. Background from layer. All right, so that's step number one. So I'll show you again. Layer new background from layer. So now you'll see right here it says background. Okay. Let me move. Let me move myself a little bit. Let me cam y'all. Hold up. I'll move this guy down here. All right. All right. Gotta love ecam, y'all. You gotta love ecam. Put me up here. Cool. So I did layer, new, um, layer from background. I said background from layer. Layer from background. Layer, new, layer from background. All right, so now we have this background layer here. So now what you want to do to start making your edits is go down to um, this adjustment layer button. And then you can start tweaking. So it's a lot of different stuff here. But what I would recommend you do, you go to first is curves. Because um, you can adjust like the brightness and contrast and um, highlights and shadows. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. So if I go here and here's my curves panel, so I'll, I'll drag this out just so I can expand it so I can really just start tweaking it. So I usually go to the upper right for the exposure so I can make it brighter, darker. Bring this down. So I'm really using my hair and this mic as a baseline because I want the blacks to be pretty black, right? And then um, you can adjust the reds, the greens, the blues. So if I select red, you know, to make it more red, bring the shadows, I bring them up, bring them down. If I go to green, it'll do the same thing. Tweak the greens. Boom. You can also sample different different colors as well to set the black point, but I'll leave that alone for now. So that looks good to me. So if I toggle this off, so this is the original and this is what the curves adjusted, right? So you can also go to, go back to the adjustment layer. So you see I have this curves layer here, right? I go back down to the adjustment layers. If I go to like photo filter, these are different filters. You can kind of toggle through different filters they have. Cooling. So you see how I made the whole image a lot more cooler. <laughs> warming. So you see warming, cooling, orange, magenta. I just toggle through some of them. Deep yellow. So it's real subtle, y'all. It's real subtle. I actually like the deep yellow. That looks cool to me. Density. So this is like the intensity. So it's 25. This is if I bring it up. That's super yellow, right? So. The beauty of it is, and this is just like Ecamm, is knowing, just have an idea of, of 
of a couple of the the options that are available within it and then just slide these sliders y'all just <laughs> slide to the left <laughs> slide to the right and see what looks good to you what looks pleasing to you so it's not you don't even have to get it super technical just drag the sliders around it's like okay that's too much let me let me try this let me try that so just experiment that's the beauty of it so i'm i'm, I'm digging this so far so if I take this off, you see, okay, this is with just the curves and this is with, with nothing. So if I just put the photo filter on, it did a little something, something that looks a little more cin cinematic, right? But I have the curves on and then the photo filter on as well. Um, so in theory, if I was to export this LUT just like this and apply it in the, in the Ecamm for my actual video, it will look just like this, right? Um, so let me just show you a couple more options in here. So if we go to, let's see, um, let's go to vibrance. Okay, you can increase the vibrance. So if I drag it down, a quick way to see what a tool does is drag it all the way down or drag it all the way up. Right? So if I drag the vibrance down, you see it gets rid of some of the color, right? That looks kind of cool too, but let's bring it up some let's bring it up some because we can always reduce the intensity of the LUT inside of Ecamm so keep that in mind as well all right so I like that I bring the saturation down kind of takes things in the opposite direction drag it up that looks that looks way too much right so I'll keep it like right here okay so if I take the vibrance off it looks like it, it I didn't really do anything with the vibrance to be honest let me drag it up some more just a bit more Okay. If I drag this below the photo filter, let's see if it changes anything. Subtly. It did a little subtle situation. Okay. Um so what we also do, let's see. Let's let's try one more black and white. Okay, so if you want that's if you wanted to make it black and white. And you can adjust different shades as well to make certain shades pop more or less. If you want to do black and white but you can you know in ecamm they have a black and white button you can toggle as well to keep it super simple if you don't want a black and white LUT. right um so if i had that and then let me drag this above the photo filter layer oh i got something up here no wonder Wow, that looks completely different. So if I adjust this to luminosity, you see, I should be able to, let me see something. Adjust certain uh, elements of the image. This is cool, y'all. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> so this is just the blues. So you see my chair, my hat, taking the blues down, blues up. Magentas. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Yellows. I'm digging it. Okay. All right. Hopefully I'm not doing too much. Are y'all still following me? <laughs> All right. So let me see if I take this off. Okay. I think I'll go without the black and white adjustment layer on here. Okay. So now we got a LUT. We're going to stick with this one for now. All right. So what you want to do is, um, I believe you group these, if I'm not mistaken. So you want to uh, um, select all of these and then go to this this toggle right here. It's like a hamburger menu and then do um, new group. Okay, new group. And hit OK. So now all of these, oh, you know what? It's new group from layers, y'all. So select all of these and then do new group from layers. I believe this is how you do it. I haven't done it in a while. So I'm going to name this um, LUT. Uh, okay. 
Richard. So I'm going to name this the Richard Lutt. <laughs> my man, I appreciate you, my brother. Truly. Uh, all right. So now I'm going to do file, export, color lookup tables. All right. So let me make sure I'm doing this right. So for the grid points, so I'm going to call it Richard Lutt. Richard Lutt. Uh, I don't think I need the .png, to be honest. All right, so I'm just going to do the cube. I'm going to leave the grid points at medium. Leave it at medium because you know, if you do a higher, it's going to make too large of a file. So I'm going to hit export to uh, Richard Lutt. Dot Lutt. I should save it as a cube, to be honest, I believe. All right. This is going to be the test, y'all. Either it's going to work or fail miserably. <laughs> so now let me scooch back over. I appreciate it. Damon is the driver about the let pack. I appreciate it. I need to do another one, y'all. I need to do another one. Um. So, okay. So let's see if it works. So I'm going to do select LUT. Oh, I'm not even in. Let me pull up. Live demo mode. Command D. All right, so I'm going to go here in my camera effects to select LUT and go to um, episode eight, richardlutt.cube. Boom. There it is, y'all. There is the LUT. And I can adjust the intensity as well, right? So I effectively did all of the picture settings that I wanted to do inside of, inside of Photoshop already so I don't have to do them in here. Right, so I may not even do, need to do any additional tweaking to these picture settings at all. I mean, I can if I want, right? So I'll show you the before and after quickly in a second, so you can see, so you can see what the difference is. So the I always look at the shine on my nose to see how much shine there is, and then base my brightness off of that. <laughs> Y'all want that joint to be too shiny like this? You can't even see my nose. So I kind of base my brightness off of the shininess of my nose. So if I take the LUT off, boom, LUT on at about 60%, boom, off, 60-ish, off, 60-ish. So of course this will depend on your camera and how you have to have the settings dialed in on, on your camera first before you bring it into Ecamm. You can do all your quote unquote picture settings, brightness, temperature and stuff in Photoshop first, similarly to what I just did, or you can do it inside of Ecamm. Then take your screenshot of your frame, bring that into Photoshop and adjust your, your, um, your, your settings to save the LUT. Okay. So that's it y'all. That, <laughs> that's, that's it. So I'll, I'll pop back into Photoshop real quick just to create another one quickly. Um, so shift command D. All right. So do my screen share. Bring up Photoshop again. So I'm just going to save this file real quick, just because these adjustments are in there. You know what? I'm just going to save it as a LUTs. Episode 8 LUTs. All right. So I'll toggle this off, this Richard LUT group off. Okay. Hit OK. All right, so I'll toggle that off. Close this for now. Toggle it on, toggle it off. All right, let's create another one real quick. So first you want, well, it's already the background layer, but if it wasn't, you wouldn't want to go to layer, new, layer from background, but it already is. So now I just go ahead and do my adjustments. So um, I'm just going to kind of freestyle this one, y'all. Let's do selective color. Um, let's do the blues or cyan. Let's see. It's very subtle. Scam likely, not right now. <laughs> All right. Looking at the blues in the background back here. See, even usually that light over there is uh, is orange, but it I changed it. Okay, so if I go to, let's see, magentas. This probably wasn't a good example. 
the blacks, the dollar blacks. In. All right, forget to select the color for now, y'all. <laughs> Let's do something else. All right. Uh, hmm. Let's go back to curves. Oh, that's really cold. Okay. I want to do something a little different. I'm, I'm, I tend to be kind of boring when, <laughs> when it comes to this stuff, <laughs> when it comes to this stuff, y'all. So let's, let's see what the hue and saturation to do. Yeah, let's do this one. Let's do like we're a, a superhero or something. <laughs> okay levels levels um uh, i'm gonna really need to do this too much so i like the levels that we have already yeah so let's just do this let me, let me just export this one real quick all right so i'm gonna group these so shift click group all these go to this hamburger menu new group from layers and now i do um superhero just, don't you know uh what is it guardians of the galaxy i feel like it's a character that's like red or pink in that <laughs> this is just the uh, okay now i'm gonna go to file export uh color lookup tables so i'm hoping that the fact that i have richard lutt toggled off it's just going to export the superhero so we're going to find out all right so superhero cube boom okay all right now i'm going to come back into ecam select boom take this lut off select this lut superhero.cube boom and there it is <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. So if I reset the color settings, let me see if I can fix it in here if I wanted to. Nope. Nope. So the LUT is pretty much baked in. So even if I adjust these color settings, these um picture settings in here, can't necessarily correct what I did, which is fine. But it looks good. So <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious, y'all. Oh, you, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't doing this seriously. I was just showing you how to create another one quickly and how to export it just to illustrate the point. There's so much that you can do in there, y'all, um, especially with the curves and different colors and stuff like that um, to find a pleasing look for your own live stream. So let me stop playing. <laughs> Take that off. Let me put the one um, back on. I have a folder full of different LUTs, y'all. Like I have <laughs> strange things, LUTs. <laughs> That I downloaded, I believe I got off of it, Vital Elements. They're always really harsh when you add them, but then, of course, you can adjust the intensity um, of them as well. Reduce the brightness. So you see how it looks more cinematic, starting to look more cinematic already? Just depends on what, what the look is you're going for. You may not know it until you see it, right? So we're off, on, more of a Stranger Things vibe. And it just helps you to stand out and just look a little bit different. Um, that's all. Upside down. Let's see this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Upside down. That's perfect. Perfect name for this one. So you can see it's more cooler. It's a more cooler vibe. Okay. So. Don't save it. I got you. Yo. All right, y'all. So that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions for me? Um, told you it was going to be a shorter one. It's still, we still took about 40 minutes or so, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, let's, they allow you to just have a more a cleaner, more cinematic look, depending on what you're going for and just stand out a bit, just a bit more, you know, um, edit a LUT for me on the fly right now <laughs> uh what do you mean are you is this something you got to send me 
or what? Or do you have an image? Mike? No, just tinker with it, man. Just tinker with it. I'm going to challenge you to tinker with it. All right. I'm going to challenge you to create something and then share it with us. Share it in the community. All right. Share it in the Ecamm Live community. Um, yeah. Then if you're watching this, I'm going to challenge you. If you have Photoshop, to go ahead and uh, create some LUTs and share them with us in the community. I'll give you guys a little bit of homework. All right. It's fun, y'all. If you don't have Photoshop and you're interested in creating, let's grab Photoshop, y'all. <laughs> grab it. <laughs> there's a there's a free trial, I believe. Um, if not, sign up for it. For it. And of course, you get a lot of different tools in the Adobe Suite. Um, and then canceling when you don't need it. <laughs> All right. Well, cool, y'all. Yeah, Mike, go ahead and uh create one and add it in the community and then tag me. All right. I'm anxious to to look at it. But um, that was a cool finesse. <laughs> <laughs> you almost you almost succeeded with. <laughs> what other apps can we use to create LUTs? Um, you know what? I don't know because I only know a Photoshop, but let's look that up real quick. Let's let's do that together, y'all. Real quick, real quick. Screen share home. Um, how to create LUTs. I know you can do it in Photoshop Lightroom. LUTs. 3D LUT Creator. I have heard of this software, but I heard it was a bit more complicated in 3D LUT Creator. Yeah, this looks intimidating to me. Uh, yeah, 3D LUT Creator. Um, well, let's see what else we got. This is Photoshop, I know, I think, because I clicked on it, so it has to be Photoshop. <laughs> Photoshop Premiere Pro. Oh, you can create them in Premiere Pro, y'all. I don't I don't use Premiere Pro. I'm a Final Cut um guy. Um, but you can create them in Premiere Pro. Uh what makes a great LUT? Trying to see what this software is. Four Lemetri scopes for reference. Vector scope histogram. I'm not sure. This looks like um Premiere. So this is in Premiere again, I believe. I could be wrong, but it looks like Premiere to me. So uh yeah, let's just stick with Photoshop. I mean <laughs> you can use what you want, but it looks like Photoshop is like the number one um way for now. Oh, you can do it in Affinity Photo as well. I use Affinity Designer. I don't really use Photo. I have it. I don't really use it. Because stuff I would do in Photo, I would do in Photoshop. So I'm bilingual in that way. Um, but you can do it in Affinity Photo as well. So that may be something you guys consider because I do know Affinity Photo is just a one-time purchase, right? Um, it's a one-time purchase of a, about 50 or 60 bucks as opposed to uh, like a subscription, like a, like the Adobe Suite. I'm a Photoshop. So, Yeah. Maybe they will do that in another video. How to do it inside of a uh, inside of Affinity Photo. All right, y'all. If that's it, then I'm not mad at can't score if I don't shoot. Look, I'm not mad at you, my brother. I'm not mad at you. Um, but yeah, if you guys if you guys don't have any other questions, I guess we will call it a day. And well, let me switch back, y'all, because this is making me look like I'm in Stranger Things. Let me just show you guys a couple more real quick. This is called Airy and Bright. So look up um look up LUTs in in Vital Elements as well cuz there are a lot of different ones that you might just find one that you like in there. You don't have to download anything. Just download the LUT <laughs> or the LUT pack. All right. So y'all yeah, stick with this for now. But yeah, that's it y'all. Um I'll see you next week. If you got any suggestions on any videos you want to see, anything you want to learn, um, especially as it relates to creation, uh, design, uh, stuff like that, you know, um, let me know. Drop it in the group. 
in in the Facebook group, the Ecamm Live community, and we'll take it into consideration um, for more videos on Marshall Creates. All right, y'all, sincerely appreciate everyone for tuning in. Thanks for taking some time out with me, uh, sharing with me on this Thursday afternoon or whatever time it is that you're watching this. Um, I appreciate, appreciate it, and I will see you guys next week.